To the uninitiated, the charged blade may seem like a very defensive weapon, but its flexibility to transform that defense into a robust offense is where the beauty of the weapon lies. In this guide, we'll cover the basics and advanced applications of charge blade in Monster Hunter Rise so that you too can destroy your enemies with the ultimate weapon. The Charge Blade features two modes, Sword and Axe. While in Sword mode, your mobility is improved and you're able to block with your shield. Your sword attacks also generate energy that can turn into files. These files are primarily used when in Axe mode where a majority of your damage is done. Though the Axe mode forces slower movement and evasion, the Charge Blade's kit has many options to help cover some of its shortcomings. Starting off with Sword mode basics, your standard attack string consists of two slashes ending off with a round slash. By pressing your combo buttons, you'll do a lunging slash which is useful to gap close and is also the same as your draw attack. This can follow up into the rest of your basic attack stream. Holding down your special attack button and releasing when your character glows will unleash the charge slash which contributes greatly to file generation. If you hold it too short or too long, the attack animation is significantly weaker. After most attacks, pressing the combo buttons will perform a quick shield thrust and pressing it again will transition into an axe attack which we'll cover later. Also, after any attack, you can hold the direction and press the special attack button to do a fade slash, which is useful for repositioning. The majority of sword attacks can be chained interchangeably, but a couple of ideal combo strings for follow charge is charge slash to round slash back to the charge slash, or you can even throw in a shield thrust in there if you'd like. As mentioned before, as you attack with your sword, it builds up energy. When reloaded, the energy converts into files. It'll convert into 3 files if you have yellow gauge, or 5 files if you have red gauge. These files are a resource to utilize elemental boosts and your elemental discharges. If you build up too much energy, however, your sword will overheat, which causes your attacks to bounce. Keep in mind you can typically reload before and after most attack streams, especially after guarding. By holding guard and pressing your normal attack, your hunter will lock the sword into the shield and morph it into an axe. You can also enter axe mode from sheath by holding a direction and pressing your special weapon attack button. Pressing your normal attack after guarding will also transition into axe mode. Your normal attack string loops between rising slash and overhead slash. Your special attack strings will perform Elemental Discharge 1 to Elemental Discharge 2, and when pressed a third time, will transition you into the Amped Elemental Discharge, or AED for short, all of which will consume one file. You can interchange between your normal and Elemental Discharges, and AED can be activated at any time while in Axe mode by pressing your combo buttons. Just keep in mind that using AED will return you back into Sword mode. One very important mechanic to take note of is Element Boost, aka Shield Boosting. By pressing Guard during AED, you perform a Round Slash that transfers all the files into the shield and boosts it elementally, which improves both the weapon power and your shielding power. While boosted, your AED can transform into the Ultra Elemental Discharge or UED for short, which is a more powerful version of the AED, but utilizes all of your files. Depending on if you're on impact or elemental files, the Ultra's discharge path changes, so be mindful of your positioning. After a certain amount of time, the boost will expire, but can always be refreshed so long as you have at least one file when using the element up round slash. Another important mechanic to charge blade is called guard point, which is different from your regular guard. At the beginning of the Axe Morph attack and at the end of Sword Morph attack, Round Slash or Fate Slash, there are guard frames or guard points built into the animation that refract a small portion of damage while also reducing hit reactions. The effects are similar to that of guard level 2, but doesn't count towards the skill level. While it won't be the catch-all be-all, it can have a significant impact on your countering capabilities as some attacks can have a large enough impact that leaves you unable to react. A proper guard point, however, will not only refract damage, but it can reduce the hit reaction enough to allow you to counter with either a Morph Slash, AED, or a UED, or even just hop out of the way. 
This is further enhanced by guard and guard up armor skills. Now let's go over the switch skills. By holding special attack during a reload when you're in shield boost, you perform the condensed elemental slash, which not only does a sizable amount of damage, but also puts you in sword boost mode. What this does is adds file damage to your sword attacks and also prevents you from bouncing off monsters with your attacks. Especially since sword attacks are needed to build up files, it's recommended you enter sword boost mode whenever possible. Just keep in mind that you need to have shield boost up before it'll register. Activated just like the condensed elemental slash, the condensed spinning slash puts you into axe boost mode regardless if you have files or are in shield boost. While in axe mode, both normal and special attack buttons can be held down for longer attacks which do more damage and help generate more files. With this switch skill, you basically want to stay in axe mode for as long as possible using your normal and special attacks, as AED and UED is highly discouraged as sheathing or any actions that morph back into sword mode will automatically exit you out of axe boost. Replacing the normal guard point, counter morph slash replaces your morph attacks with longer guard point animations. The benefit to this is that the animation is longer so you have a higher chance of landing the guard point, and perfect timing your guard points buffs the next file damage attack. However, morphing between sword and axe mode takes a considerable amount of time and has the potential to throw off your guard timing. It's also important to note that the axe to sword morph attack gets the guard point animation in the beginning as opposed to the end. If your playstyle involves UED or counter UED spamming, this could be the switch skill for you. At the cost of one wire bug, you perform the Morphing Advance, which serves as a gap closer as it helps you travel across a good chunk of distance. During the startup of the animation, you actually have super armor, which means you will not flinch through attacks, but you may still receive some damage. You can use this to power through attacks or even roar to gap close and counter after the animation by pressing either normal attack to enter sword mode and round slash, special attack to stay in axe mode and perform elemental discharge too, or by pressing your combo buttons to either AED, UED, or even use this as an opportunity to refresh your shield boost. Also at the cost of one wire bug is the counter peak performance, which is a very powerful skill that reinforces your shield with silk converting any attack that's guarded into files. Provided that an attack is properly guarded, you not only gain a full reload of files, but you can press normal attack to instantly transition into condensed elemental slash or spinning slash or you can press combo buttons to let loose an AED or UED. Counterpeak performance is an extremely useful tool not only for guarding, but for resource upkeep. Mastering this will help you deal and avoid a lot of damage. Last but not least, replacing counterpeak performance is the Axe Hopper. It's an offensive technique that has you overhead slamming your axe and then launches you into the air. By pressing normal attack, you'll just do a aerial axe attack, and by pressing your weapon action button, it actually morphs you back into sword. However, by pressing your combo buttons, you can unleash a UED. Just keep in mind that the files will not discharge until you hit the ground. Also, if you press the UED input as you're about to touch the ground, your hunter will take a step forward before discharging files. Now to keep this as simple as possible, we're going to very quickly talk about skills that are extremely useful versus skills that aren't necessary but are nice to have. First off is guard and guard up. These are arguably very important skills to have, especially if you want to spam AED and UED. Guard reduces knockback and stamina depletion while guarding. Having guard levels can help put you in a position where you're able to freely counter or maneuver or reposition. Guard up, on the other hand, will allow you to block ordinarily unblockable attacks, such as this Hyper Beam from Ra Zhang. Combining guard and guard up will help turn you into a guard pointing and counterattacking machine. Artillery is a straightforward skill that boosts the attack power of explosive attacks, which should include all of your file attacks on Charge Blade. If you can somehow fit this into your build, Offensive Guard buffs your attack for about 12 seconds by a certain percentage when you perfectly time a guard. This effect is extended to guard points and should stack with the counter morph slash. Now, if you're a DPS min-maxer, all of the general DPS must-have skills should be incorporated as much as possible, including weakness exploit, which raises affinity or your critical chance when targeting weak spots. 
Critical Eye, which raises Affinity. Critical Element can also be a very important skill to place into your set as it boosts your elemental damage. Load Shells is a very important skill, especially for UED spammers, as it raises your file count, which raises your maximum UED damage. Critical Boost, which raises the damage of your critical attacks, and of course, Attack Boost, which raises your attack power and affinity at certain levels. Now for some other skills that are potentially nice to have but aren't totally necessary are skills like Slugger, which increases the stun power by a certain percent. This should extend to any file related attack, provided that you have the impact file equipped. As guarding takes up stamina, having constitution can be very useful as it reduces fixed stamina depletion by a certain percentage depending on the level. Focus is a nice comfort skill that grants a faster gauge fill for files and faster charge time for certain attacks like charge double slash. When you account for potential whiffs, having focus can help ensure you're able to keep your file count high so that you can keep on dishing out the damage. Last but not least, we have Rapid Morph, which increases the speed at which you morph between Axe and Sword Mode. Now while this isn't a totally necessary skill, it can have its niche uses and can potentially soften the blow of a mistimed guard point, especially if you're using Counter Morph Slash. Now that we've gotten all the basics and the armor skills out of the way, let's go over some advanced tips that can help elevate your Charge Blade game. Guard points are extremely important to higher levels of gameplay. Not only do you refract damage, but it can also help set you up for counter AEDs and UEDs. It's also much more effective compared to regular guarding, and in the event you don't have wire bugs available for counter peak performance, it could very well be the difference between being stuck in a stagger as opposed to being ready to counter. In addition, you can also use the axe draw attack to utilize the guard point animation at startup. This is extremely useful for when you're running into a monster and don't already have your weapon drawn. The ebb and flow of Charge Blade requires you to manage your resources as you will consistently find yourself recovering files to utilize them for boosts if not to power up your own attacks. Getting familiar with your attack and combo strings in various situations in addition to using counter peak performance is key to keeping your reserves constantly stocked. That said, you can also utilize the deflect immunity from Sword Boost in order to reload for full files and then get into red or overheat gauge to have a backup on hand to fill up. Although roars and tremors don't typically deal damage, they can still be used to your advantage. In fact, using counter peak performance on roars and tremors will still proc the file generation as it still has an impact on the shield. Especially on monsters that have large openings on roars, you could easily turn this into an opportunity to upkeep your resources or even as a window to punish the monster. Although you can only use UED while in shield boost, by pressing back and normal attack right at the flash, you can opt to use an AED instead. This is useful especially if you're looking to target a specific body part, if you want to mitigate file loss due to initial UED positioning, or if using a UED would actually end up getting you attacked. Positioning with Charge Blade is especially important, especially because of how you need to juggle your files and boosts. You want to make sure you're fully maximizing the spread of your UEDs to get the most amount of damage out of it. Same obviously also goes when using Condensed Spinning Slash. Don't forget that you can utilize things such as Fade Slash or even the Advancing Morph in order to properly put yourself in an optimal distance. And that wraps up this guide. As with any other weapon, practice makes perfect. Charge Blade is a very complex weapon as it offers many options to deal with many situations. However, from an extremely robust shield to an explosion inducing axe, the versatility of the Charge Blade is what makes it very, very powerful. Practice your craft and continue to transform the ultimate defense into the ultimate offense. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment, and smash the subscribe button to get more Monster Hunter and variety content from yours truly. You can also check me live on Twitch where I stream a variety of games including Genshin Impact, Apex Legends, and of course, Monster Hunter. Also, a very huge thank you as always to not only my subscribers on Twitch, but also to all of my supporters on Coffee. You guys make it easier for a content creator like me to keep pumping out content. That's it for me, Cartmasters. As always, stay safe, 
Get mad, get sad, have fun. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Easiest of claps, man. Hello?